to some people it wouldn't seem high, but to me, I've had very high highs. Mm -hmm. I've also had very low lows. Right. Russell Brunson was saying the same thing. He's had very high highs. He's had very low lows. Him paying off his house allows him to take certain risks mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur because he knows if shit hits the fan, his family's taken care of because exactly. they're still going to have a home. Hey, yo, everybody has a six-figure goal, but they're only thinking of 100 racks, not realizing that six figures goes all the way up to 900K. And I was able to do that with just one digital product in my business. But it's not about how much came in. It's about how much that I missed out on because of information that I did not have. And I don't want you to go through the same thing in your entrepreneurial journey. So I'm hosting a completely free masterclass this upcoming Thursday, teaching how you can take your own IP, your own intellectual property, knowledge and information that you already have, create digital products and digital assets with it. Not only that, but I'm going to teach you the entire framework and system and system, S-Y-S-T-E-M, stands for saving yourself time, energy, and money so you don't have to go through the same pitfalls that I had to go through along the way. So go ahead, click the link, and join the masterclass. It is completely free, but spots are limited, so take advantage now. I'll see you on Thursday. Welcome to another episode of It's Crowded at the Top. I am your host, the Aston CEO. <laughs> you got the voice of God on the other side. Hey, peace and blessings, beautiful people. We have been laughing for 30 minutes before we start recording this episode. <laughs> so who knows how this is going to start. <laughs> and don't have a clue where I'm going to go with it. But it's going to go somewhere. It's oh, it, going to go somewhere. It always goes. It finds a way. Entrepreneur or investor? What's the goal? Okay. What what do you what do you choose to be? What do I choose to be? Uh Hey, I just saw, I just saw too. What happened? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to have to maybe clip this or maybe don't clip it because it could be funny. But my leg, I got a bunch of thigh meat showing right now. <laughs> I got the thighs out. Is it springtime yet? It ain't spring yet. It's in the 80s where I'm at. Man. Yeah, I had to, I had to put I up. Just got, I just got on this hoodie because, uh, because it's, uh. It's a little chilly uh, in the crib because I, I got the AC on. I thought you were about to say because March Madness is upon us. I ain't know. I ain't know it's the SU, honestly. For <laughs> real? You just threw it on? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to SU Jaguars. I, th I thought you was just, thought you decided to rip today. I was like, oh, you stole that from Walmart? <laughs> I did. You know we don't ever get no merch, man. I did. I stole this hoodie from Walmart when I went to Southern University. Hey, because when I went, it was a when I went, it was a different time than what it is now. They got they get enough gear that they won't have to go through the means I went through, which is insane. Because when I went, they gave us a travel suit. The year that I took this, they gave us a travel suit, a hoodie, and a bunch of different t shirts. Uh, like maybe like three. Three shirt, like a white, blue, and yellow. Man, I, I don't know. I had a lot of shirts. Mm. I just put it that way. I I got more than what they. Yeah. I got more than what they gave me. And, and one pair of shoes for the whole season. <laughs> I, I got a lot of pair of shoes. Oh, okay. So, but I but I had to, but the shoes didn't fit me. Mm -hmm. So like my size that I actually wear. When I hoop, I like my, I like my shoe snug. I ain't like my, uh, foot to be able to move. Mm -hmm. So you know how some people they like hoop in a bigger size. Yeah, I I used to like hooping in a fourteen. Yeah, people are hooping a bigger size because you're wearing a bunch more stuff than you're wearing on your normal shoes too. You got mm -hmm. on two pair of socks. Some people wear more than two pair of socks. You got the tape and stuff. Yeah. I wanted to wear my normal shoe size with two pair of socks with the tape. Mm. And be snug. The shoe that they got for us ran small. Mm, so you double, yeah. No real estate. So I so I hooped in the pair that you hooped in your senior year all year. Mm. Cause even though I had way more shoes, you know, coach at the time, he's like, you gotta, you gotta play in the shoes that we give you. 
Which is the dumbest thing ever. So I was like, well, well then can I play in the shoes y'all gave us last year? Yeah, come on, come on, in and get these shoes. Because <laughs> I had a bunch of them. Bro, it was to the point my my feet were literally bleeding. Like I, I pulled, I showed them my socks dripping with blood. Like, please, can I have a bigger size? Like, look, that's, that's what size you said you wear, son. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. In my in my more mature mind, man, I wish I could go back in time and protest. And- <laughs> so, but the the only the only um I stole a pair of shoes a half size bigger. Mm-hmm. So that season, my one pair of game shoes, which is crazy, because he wouldn't let me hoop and nothing else, was the pair that I stole. Mm. I stole them in Washington State mm. after I had Clay a terrible performance because I had a terrible performance against Clay because I couldn't move, bro. Yeah. That's that's the game that I showed him. I, um, I'm going to NBA play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't, I showed him it's literally blood dripping from my sock. That's, like, look. That's wild. Yeah. And then I saw a pair. I, I was I I got them because that's when I watched all, I got every Slam magazine and stuff. That's the only reason why I knew who Clay was because I used to have like a little page of like people that went to smaller schools. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, we playing him. I'm like, I got to have at least 15 this game. Mm -hmm. Nope. But anyways, entrepreneur. Invested. The reason why I asked this is because I was watching a video earlier today, Russell Brunson. He was talking about how he does certain things as an entrepreneur that people would think is terrible investment advice. Mm, like what? And he was like, and he was saying <clears throat> he's not an investor. So he's not going to take the advice from the investors. Right. He's an entrepreneur. And that's the first person that I ever heard say it like that. Like, I believe that myself, but I've never been able to frame it Mm -hmm. in the sentence that he did to, like, explain it. Mm -hmm. And he said it in a way that I'm like, that's digestible. And I can, now I have a way to form what some of my beliefs are. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, I listen to a lot of people that are in the investment world, and I've and I've taken advice from some of these people before, and I've ended up on the on the wrong side of things and the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Cause they're not they're not living the life that I'm living. I'm an entrepreneur, I build things. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't invest. Right. Or or if I do invest, the things that I invest in are different. I invest into my personal development and acquiring skills. Things that help and then my and then my business. Mm -hmm. They're investing in like investment vehicles and stuff. Right. Right. So I'm like it it's like a lot of times people think that the two are like the same when they're really not at all. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you had said it, I started thinking about like if I had to if I had to think about what would be my kind of like perfect trajectory, it would be like entrepreneurship into investment. But but when you're a builder, I feel like you always gonna wanna build. True. That's why Russell Brunson can't let go of click funnels. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see that. But even still. Or if he did, <clears throat> that's why he had that's why it's like, all right, click funnels is running. I gotta build something else though, bro. Click funnels 2.0. Right. Yeah, I, I think And I feel like my click funnels, I hope he ain't doing what Apple, what Apple denied doing for years and then finally came out to be true when What's the new that? Oh, the new iPhone uh-huh. come out, slow your stuff down. Because my funnels have been like 
seeming like a little slow. Yeah, yeah. Like I and that and that slowness of and that slowness of mess up with your conversion. Yeah, for sure. Because while you got somebody and it take your page, I'm just making up numbers. Twelve seconds to load versus that person three. might go ahead and click off and get back to scrolling. Like I don't know what's going on with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get people to sign up for the ClickFunnels 2.0. Yeah, that would be trash. But I would do it. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it, it if make, it was me, I would do yeah, it. Yeah, it makes sense as the as the owner, but from the consumer perspective, it's like, yeah, man, come on, bro. But that's that's yeah. business though. Just like just like most That's why I said I would do yeah. it. I can't knock it. <laughs> Restaurants, the wing spots, they make their wings smaller. <laughs> and increase and the just price. Like Instagram with the with the uh new verification monthly. Like, hey, yeah. A little little more visibility. Exactly. You get fake pages all the time, S and CEO right here. You <laughs> yeah. You get a little protection for your followers. I, I know I said we don't suppress your content, but you'll get a little more added visibility. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, sign me up, bro. But yeah. Customer service. Oh, look, and ain't no telling how long that's been in the in the queue, bro. Well, I just know what I just know what Facebook's customer service is like. So I my hopes ain't up for Instagram's customer service. <laughs> Right. You sit there, you get Facebook a hundred thousand dollars in the in twenty days. Be like, can I talk to somebody, please? <laughs> <laughs> can I get an email back? <laughs> please, a please, chat. can I talk to somebody? <laughs> yeah. But now nah, and when you do the... get to talk to somebody, it's nobody that has any capabilities to push a button. <laughs> yeah, see, that's I don't know nothing about that. <sighs> Boy, yeah, bro. I can't even imagine, dog. <laughs> like you forking out it, six <laughs> figures, and you can't even get a live chat. <laughs> well, you can't get a live chat, but it'll be just somebody reading from a script, like they can't do anything. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to escalate this situation. Can I speak to who <laughs> is getting escalated to? Please. Uh, but I cut you off. You was about to say something. Oh no, nah, I was just gonna say in regards to the uh entrepreneurship versus investor, I think that yeah, you would still do it, but I think like the like you tip the scales. Like for example, I would say that Jay-Z is is an entrepreneur, but I see him tipping the scale into the investor space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Tipping the scale, he he fifty plus years old. It's like yeah, when the when the candles start to burn out. Oh yeah, 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 I, yeah. That's why that's why I, I didn't put a time on it, but I just said that's why I just said like ultimately, is the the scale is gonna tip into that space because you ain't just gonna keep building. You are gonna learn how to just become venture capitalists essentially. Because say say this, this is. This is what Russell Brunson was talking about, where this thought press process came from, or this conversation we're having right now. Anybody that just hears anybody talk about investments, period, any real estate guy you know, any YouTube video you watch, any quick Google search, you'll hear that buying your home is a terrible investment. Right. Russell Brunson was talking about how he paid off his house because he's an entrepreneur, not an investor. Mm -hmm. You've heard me say certain things about paying off a house. I know it's a terrible investment, but I would pay off my house. I'm right. going to pay off my house. Right. Any real estate guy or any investor would be like, why would you do that? Uh, Use that money over here mm -hmm. to make more money. Or you got a bunch of equity. Pull that equity out mm -hmm. so you can go over here and 
to make this money and make these investments and stuff. Investments. <laughs> Key word. But I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur and I know I've had, to some people it wouldn't seem high, but to me, I've had very high highs. Mm -hmm. I've also had very low lows. Right. Russell Brunson was saying the same thing. He's had very high highs. He's had very low lows. Him paying off his house allows him to take certain risks mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur because he knows if shit hits the fan, his family's taken care of because exactly. they're still going to have a home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I've had that thought process before. I just didn't know how to articulate it until I heard Russell Brunson say that. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I've had like, whoo. Mm -hmm. And I've had shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I've had <clears throat> fuck. <laughs> Yeah, bro. It's it's inevitable in in the so space. so it's like, but it's like when you have those shit moments or those fuck moments or those what the fuck mm -hmm. moments. You know, at least you got your crib, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And that was his thought process, and he was like, him him paying off his house allows him to take. The big risk mm -hmm. that we take, mm -hmm. or that I take. I know you in a different position. I don't have a family. I don't have a wife. Mm -hmm. I don't have kids. Yeah. So I'm willing to go even to some crazier stuff. Yeah, just because sure. it's like, yeah, it's definitely some opportunity. And, and it's and it's one <laughs> reason why. And the position that I'm in right now, as far as not having certain things. That's like an intentional, like yeah. like you chose to have a family right now. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I can just pick and be like, yo, here's my, I want a family. <laughs> Here it is. What you actually kind of can, though. That's just kind of crazy. But Yeah, I but could. I know, what, I know what you're saying. Though. I know what you're but saying. I'm saying I've intentionally not put myself in certain positions because I know that's going to take away yeah, for sure. a, a certain risk factor for me. Yeah, for sure. It's an, it's I know certain things that I didn't do when I was just in a serious relationship mm -hmm. with somebody thinking of a possible future. So I'm like, if I had other people, there's no way I would be doing some of the things that I do because I'm like, I could, I can't risk, I can't risk losing this. Yeah. Whereas if you got Russell saying like he got his house paid, a, a nice house regardless, he's like, I can risk losing this. Like we still. Mm -hmm. We still got a home, mm -hmm. and I'm sure he lives in a great house. Like he's a billionaire. If people don't know Russell Brunson is a billionaire, mm -hmm. but still he lives in Boise, Idaho. So I'm sure his his dollar on his house stretch a lot further. Yeah, for sure, for sure. In Boise, and he stays tried and true to Boise. All the events is in Boise. Mm -hmm. He don't he don't go nowhere else. Yeah, he not his inner circle. You going to Boise? Yeah, he ain't taking you to Miami or Atlanta or oh, LA, Vegas, or Vegas. Yeah, Click Funnels Funnel Hacker event might be somewhere else, but because that's for everybody. But his stuff, you you sign up to pay him thirty thousand, fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars or something. You coming to Boise every mm -hmm. time? He want to hire people. He wanted to hire Myron Golden to be his CEO. Myron would have had to come to Boise. <laughs> Myron said he didn't want to go to Boise and he didn't want to work. Right. Yeah, because Myron is is recorded saying wages is of the devil. <laughs> 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 Profits <laughs> is different. Wages Satan. That's <laughs> my rippy yo. <laughs> but but it, it was just interesting <clears throat> to, to hear him say that. And I'm like, this is a this is a billionaire that I and the video that I saw, it wasn't a recent video either. This video was like from five or six years ago. Honey band, honey band, honey band, honey band, honey band, honey bands. Everybody has a six figure goal, but they're thinking too small. They're only thinking of 100 bands, not realizing that six figures goes all the way up to 900K. And I was able to do that in my business with just one digital product. Mm -hmm. 
But it's not about how much came in. It's about how much that I lost out on because of information that I did not have. And I do not want you to go through the same thing on your entrepreneurial journey. So I'm hosting a completely free masterclass this upcoming Thursday, teaching how you can create and scale digital products and digital assets. But not only that, I'm giving you the entire framework and system to take your own intellectual property, your own IP, get it in the right system to scale. And system, S-Y-S-T-E-M, stands for saving yourself time, energy, and money. So go ahead, click the link, and join me this upcoming Thursday for the masterclass. See you soon. And he was pretty much a billionaire then. Yeah, I was going to say, Cleveland is still popping. Yeah, he got, I think at the time of that video, he probably had 100,000 people paying $300 a month. Mm. Yeah, bro. It's amazing. So so say so say that's what's the math on that just in uh annual recurring revenue? Oh, hold on, man. I gotta open up Excel for that. <laughs> the regular calculator ain't gonna get that done. A hundred thousand times a hundred thousand times three hundred dollars is what per month? Uh, that is what's how many zeros is that? One, two, three. That's thirty million. A hundred thousand people times three hundred. That's so, thirty million a month. Yeah, so three sixty a year. Times twelve. That's three hundred sixty million a year, and that's was. So imagine what that is now. Yeah. Imagine what that looked like. In 2020, 2021. Or or uh Ooh. and when you we talking about exiting businesses, you know, you people exit businesses at a multiple. Right. And that's a software, and software is uh the multiple is typically higher. Mm -hmm. So say if somebody else exits at a multiple of let's say five, a software company could exit at a multiple of like ten. Yeah. Cause yeah, he is the mascot of it. He is the face of it, but it's not like like you need him to right to run it. He just loves it. Right. That's why I was talking to you the other day about about how just slowly but surely removing myself from being so hands on. Yeah. Cause that's the only but, way. But his but his stuff. You love the creativity of it. I don't I don't know if you <clears throat> you could correct me if I'm wrong. My assumption would be that you don't love sitting at the computer and editing. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I see Russell. I enjoy... Russell loves selling. The thing with editing is, I I like editing certain things that I could be like creative with. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah, but a lot of stuff I'm telling you to do, it's not no creative. Oh, like no. your creative ain't tapped in. Yeah, no the. And that's and that's why I was saying like when I was talking about being less hands on, it's more so with like operational type stuff. Because yeah. the, the other parts of the business is like the more creative stuff, like with the where the big bags come in. Because I I could just imagine sitting there and listening to my monotone voice every <laughs> single day, taking out dead spaces of air and pauses and sh shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like I'm. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't love to do <laughs> to do that. But you know what's crazy? You get in a rhythm and it's just like second nature. Yeah, I'm just saying, but but as far as like just the yeah, we're talking into, about the love of right, it or right. the pet like I know you're passionate about what you do, but I know that er that area of it, I'm like, I can't imagine. Nah. Like like I said, it's my assumption. I could be wrong, but nah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty you. sure, bro, don't like just sitting there. Chopping up little pieces, finding a finding a sound bite and nah, stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you what's enjoyable: the daily the daily free games outside. Mm. Cause I can get into I can kind of get into the bag, but that's man. in person though. I know, but I'm just I'm just saying like as far as yeah, just speaking we, to we stuff. Very Seldomly do stuff in person anymore. Yeah. And that's the thing, y'all. A lot of people, when y'all think y'all need a videographer, because videographer hit me up um, in my DMs the other day, somebody that's local. 
he was wanting to do some work, and I was like, man, I don't need no work. He was mm. like, I, you know, I'll do some stuff for uh, for free. Just want to work with you, see what I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if you need some courses shot or something. I was like, I got a camera. Mm-hmm. I got a tripod. I don't need somebody to come and shoot my course. Right, right. I'm with you. We shoot a course, and it's like we, and we. If I'm with you, and I shoot a course in person, it's more than just you shooting a course. Exactly. You be throwing me ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like direct, not kind of. No, it's what it actually is. Actually, directing. Yeah, that's that's what I, I tell I people. I have a, I have a blank. It be teamwork. Maybe, mm-hmm. hey, bro, you sounding like this, or your energy off, or you. Why don't you do that one again? It got too wordy. Mm -hmm. Or you broke it down, but the way you broke it down, it's real wordy. It might confuse somebody or Mm -hmm. something. I know he's not going to give me that. Mm -hmm. He just going to- Point and shoot. Point and shoot, and I'm going to give my information. I'm like, I can do that Mm -hmm. with my tripod and my camera. Mm -hmm. I I got with another guy once. I had some ideas, and he was just- Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> uh, Nothing against it, but I was like, yo, this I can do that myself. I can get a camera and just set it up myself. Yeah. Why I need to pay you to do that? That's exactly what I be telling people uh, who either I talk to in person or in the DMs. I'd be like, you got to bring your ideas because that implementation stuff is out the door these days. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, Shoot, or or just for people, because they'd be like, yo, I need a videographer. You need somebody to edit. Yeah. That don't take a videographer. Right. Get your phone, turn it sideways on landscape, record yourself, and then get somebody else to edit it. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say turn it sideways on landscape mode, because... It can be cropped in for anything that you need on any platform. So yeah, I know vertical, vertical right now is the thing, but I don't shoot. If I was shooting on my phone, I still wouldn't shoot vertical. Just in the sense, what if I do need it for something like yep, this? If you need it for YouTube, I can still take this and have the frame in to mm-hmm. where it zoom in and have the frame be vertical for the short form stuff. Yep. But what if I want to use it for an ad? Or for YouTube or for Facebook. Yep. So I'm like, you don't need a videographer, you just need a camera. Mm. Now, if you don't want to take the time to edit or the time to learn to edit, then find somebody to to chop it up or edit it or make it look good or put some captions on it or some some graphics or something. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yo, these a lot of these videographers getting over. I'm like, I'd be damned if I'm just paying somebody just to hold a camera. <laughs> <laughs> I can get a tripod. Yeah. Yeah, point it. And that's the thing, the point point and shoot is just like it's it's a tough business to be in, bro, because you can get anybody to just And and not even anybody or a tripod. They got the tripods where where it moves and follows you. Yeah. Yeah. I can go on Amazon and get the joint that follows you on your phone. For $50, probably less than that. Mm-hmm. Set that up. I move over here. It's going to follow me. Mm-hmm. I don't even need nobody to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Yeah. Yeah, we, we so I'm like, my, I'm like all, these video, all these videographers be hitting me up. I'm like, bro, I don't need somebody to just point the camera at me. Yeah. I do that on my own every single day. Yeah. 1,000%. Today, took the camera, took the tripod, took it to the park for some scenery. <laughs> I don't need somebody to just be with me to be at the park. Right, yeah. It's a waste of, waste of money. Bring it in my office, can move it to the living room, can move it to the kitchen, can move it to the backyard, can move it to the front yard, can move it to the park. Yeah. And then I'll be uncomfortable. I'll be like, dog, I don't even know you, dog. You're just sitting there <laughs> like this all day. All in your, in your space and face. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Go on vacation? Yo, some, yo, I need some lifestyle stuff for vacation. I'm on a trip. I'm going to just record. And then I'm going to turn the camera over and record some of me. 
<laughs> I'm gonna send it to you. Hey, bro, give me a recap. Yeah. People thought that Dubai joint was dope. Yo, who did that? <laughs> I mean, you did it, but I shot it. Nah, yeah, like for sure. Man, I ain't about to pay. I ain't about to pay uh four thousand dollars for you to come to Dubai <laughs> to just hold the camera. I can hold the camera myself. Uh, <laughs> and I got a tripod in my backpack. Yeah, nah, it's real, man. I hope, I hope, I hope some videographers are listening to this. Cause yeah, man, you gotta give me something more than just pointing and shooting, dog. <laughs> give me some direction. Give me some insight. Give me some ideas. Yeah, I tell you, that's where the money is at. That's why. That's why directors get paid. I'm talking about multiples. <laughs> Way more than the camera operator. <laughs> you can best believe that. <laughs> Way now I can more. see if it's now I can see if it's uh now I can see I'm not knocking videographers. They're needed for certain things. I'm just saying for sure. A lot a lot of the stuff that people be hitting me up for. My content looks super dope. Hey, hey Blake. Hey Aston CEO. Uh, could I take your content? I can make you great short. I can make you great short form clips from your podcast. You don't see that's what I'm posting. <laughs> and then what you give me looks like a, a yo. Can can yeah? Go ahead. I suggest I suggest y'all instead of asking people if you can make some short form content for them, just do it. And present it. And present it to them. Mm -hmm. And then if they like your stuff, if they see your stuff, they'll be like, oh, that's dope. Mm -hmm. As a particular videographer, uh, if I could think of his name off the top of my head, I would shout him out, but I can't. He used to go to everybody's conference and he would like give people recap videos like by the time they got off the stage. Oh, you talking about Brandon. Is that his name? Brandon I've, I've never met in Atlanta. I've never. It might be him. I've never met the guy personally. I've just heard people have told me stories about him. Yeah, they were like he would go to somebody's conference. He would uh, he would give people recap videos by the time they got off the stage or before they left the room. Mm -hmm. He wasn't asking people like, "Can I record right. you and can I give you some stuff?" Or, they was like, yo, he's fast. Cause you know, video, or like I've told you, I'm like, bro, I need my stuff mm -hmm, back quick. Mm -hmm. Like, I give you some stuff today. I get it back two weeks later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm be like, what what is up? And especially stuff like that, you want stuff in real time. If you right. if you're presenting to people, you want to show your audience that this is what you're doing right now. You right. don't want to show it to them two weeks later, two and a half weeks later. Right. This is where I was. He built the he built a, a a premium clientele off of that. Mm -hmm. Just giving this gift away for free, not asking. Hey, can I? You mind if I shoot? Uh, give you some content so you can see what my stuff looks like. Nah, here you go. Yeah, yeah. That's you talking about, Brandon. Brandon shot me. And shout out to shout out to bro. I don't know. But I've just heard a couple people, and I heard a couple people told me like what he did. I was like, that's dope. Yeah, smart. Because I know that that especially, you know, we move so quick. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, you be wanting stuff back because it's like mm -hmm. time ain't another essence, and stuff in the marketing space, it'll be this way tomorrow, and it literally be this way three days later. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And it goes back to um other conversation we were having about quality and quantity. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, I know I had this problem really, really bad. Overanalyzing and wanting quality to be Steven Spielberg all the time. <laughs> like versus yeah. just like getting it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I know I we had a conversation. I told you I was like, bro, I don't need my stuff to be like a Scorsese flick, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's an Instagram post. <laughs> Can I get my stuff? Yeah, and I was like, I bet, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm in here trying to. I'm taking three days to make sure your skin tone right. 
I'm like, can I, yeah, I'm like, can I please get my post, bro? Uh, oh, this man. thing is gonna have a. This thing is possibly gonna have a forty second lifespan. Yeah. In Everdom, can I get? Can I get my post? Yeah, bro. That's that's funny, man. But I don't know how we got to that. But just the just the <laughs> people just think of of like. I know if people are tuned into me, you tapped into me. You're an entrepreneur. We build things. Yeah, we may build things and exit. You know, businesses are built to sell, right? Mm -hmm. But typically, when these entrepreneurs that we hear with these big exits, what do they usually do right after? Build something build else. Something else yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, we got to. And especially it's it can get convoluted and mixed, especially in the, you know, I call it the edutainment space, it's your education and entertainment. You're hearing all this investment advice. And then we're thinking investment. I'm like, nah, you gotta do some things differently as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people that you're listening to this investing advice from. They're entrepreneurs too. Hmm. How about we watch what they're doing instead of what they're saying all the time? Because mm -hmm. we'll mess around and listen to uh, uh, Dave Ramsey talk about get rich slow when he got rich quick. Right. Yeah, listen to certain principles because I... People hear me use Dave Ramsey as an example a lot of times, think that I'm just don't agree with nothing he says. I agree with some of the stuff he says. Just like I talked about the paying off the house with the Russell Brunson. That's something I agree with. Mm -hmm. Anybody else would say, that's that's terrible. Mm -hmm. but I'm like, nah, you can just you move different when you know that that's secure. Mm -hmm. You can take those bigger risks. I've never had a car payment. Nah. You know what I'm saying? And and that's a, and that thing too with the car payments, that's what's holding a lot of people back. Yeah. I sit there and be like, yo, you got a marketing budget? Yo, if you, we just set aside this little amount of money for your marketing each month, I can't afford that. Why? Because you got a $750 car payment. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. That's one reason why I was able to maneuver differently starting out. I didn't have those expenses other people had. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind driving around looking a certain way. A lot of people out here not getting to where they can get to because they don't want to go buy a car off a of Craigslist like I did. Right. Everybody can everybody can can save up seven to ten thousand dollars and go buy a cash car. Mm -hmm. My car was two thousand or three thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. You can still find the yeah, that was twenty twelve when I bought that car for three thousand. You can still find a car for a uh, a reliable car for three thousand nowadays. Yeah. I know you do because I got I know people that drive them. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just do people want to you ain't gonna pull up looking like <laughs> look and look if we want to talk about it sometimes people's car payments be more than they rent i know and i'm talking about like between payment insurance and gas is more than they rent for an old nine c class <laughs> <laughs> but, but you want a bins yeah yeah so I'm like, look, if I had, if I had at the time, uh, when I fired my job, my rent was less than a thousand. I think it was like eight hundred dollars or something like that. Mm -hmm. I had no car payment because I, my car, I bought cash for three thousand dollars. All that extra income that people are paying on, uh, when you have a more expensive car, the insurance gonna be more. Hey, yo, most people, they have a six-figure goal, but they're thinking too small. They're only thinking of 100 bands. You're thinking too small. We need to be thinking big. <laughs> 
six figures goes up to 900K. And I was able to do that in my business with just one digital product. But it's not about how much bread came in. It's about how much that I lost out on because of information that I did not have. And I do not want the same thing to happen to you along your entrepreneurial journey. So I'm hosting a completely free masterclass this upcoming Thursday, teaching how you can take your already existing skills and information that you already have, your own intellectual property, your IP, create digital products and digital assets with them. Not only that, but I'm giving you the entire framework, strategies, and system and system, S-Y-S-T-E-M, stands for saving yourself time, energy, and money so you don't have to go through the same pitfalls that I had to go through along the way. So go ahead, click the link, and register for the masterclass, and I will see you this upcoming Thursday. So I'm just saying, just say that car payment. I don't even know what people's car payments are. I just made up a number, 750. That's from oh, certain people that I've heard. It yeah. might be 600, 700. Yeah, depending uh, whatever depending on the car, you you typically look in between like depending on, you know, whatever, six to eight these days. You got a six to eight hundred dollar car payment. I tell you you should have a six to eight hundred dollar uh yo, know, just put six to eight hundred dollars in this marketing each month. I can't afford it. Right. Why can't you afford it? Because you got the car payment. Cause you don't want to just go buy a car cash. Mm -hmm. Yup. Yeah, because I remember. But you don't. But you don't want to pull up at Mastro's in the in the cash car that you got, bro. Even I had no problem pulling up. I'm pulling up the dinners and stuff. I'm pulling up to meet people and network at State Forty Eight and Mastro's in the Jeep, in the three thousand dollar, <laughs> two thousand Jeep Grand Cherokee with two hundred eighty thousand miles on it, which is crazy. The miles is crazy, bro. That's amazing. And I'm asking the valet, uh, <laughs> is this is this um, y'all charge or, or is it like tips? Because you know some valets is only tips. Mm -hmm. Some places valet because I ain't I ain't know, but this is where I gotta come meet this dude at. Yeah, they valet yo valet my whip too. Oh, uh, it's it's twenty. Uh, I might I might find. Let me go find a parking space. It's tips. Oh, yeah, yeah. Valet my joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Because I remember like talking about like rent and car payments and stuff. That charger I had, that joint was 530. Gas was 160. And then my insurance, no, insurance is 160. And the gas was like 250, 300 a month. And my rent was. Literally a nine ninety nine. It was a thousand dollars. Bro, I remember. I remember asking you when I when I moved out your spot, move off of sleeping on your floor. Literally moved up the street. I, I remember you saying your rent was like eleven or twelve hundred or something. Mm -mm, no, nah, the rent was a thousand and was going up, and then I bought the house. Well, I just remember it was over a thousand. Cause if your rent's a thousand, don't it be some other charges on it too? Like it the was utilities ten, it and was, all that stuff? It was it was ten thirty five to be exact with the trash. Utilities mines weren't were, included. That was separate. And mines was uh and mines was maybe six hundred something, seven hundred. Oh, that's crazy. Cause I know by the time I stayed at that apartment. From thirteen to thirteen to nineteen, mm -hmm. and it was just cracking a thousand dollars. Yeah, not if if I would have stayed there the whole time, it would have easily got up to twelve hundred thirteen. My mortgage was so, thirteen fifty. <laughs> so I might have so I might have been off on the the six something, but. How much does rent rise per like if I'm there for five, six years and it just started to crack a thousand? Yeah. And it was still less than a thousand. It was like just once they put on the little utility or mm -hmm. whatever they did. Mm-hmm. Cause I'll be like, dang, bro, you live you live uh depending on traffic, uh eight 
minute drive away. Yeah, I was about to say 10 minutes, yeah. Like, if I was to go right now, like at this hour, I'm getting to your crib and listen to him. And mm -hmm. I it's just say, location, location. It's just <laughs> that area of Pearland in Texas, traffic on 518, a regular time, it's going to take me like 30 minutes yeah, or something. Yeah, it's insane. 518 is insane, bro. Yeah, I couldn't, I don't really go out there now, but I could imagine. Yeah, even what it is now, and they keep they keep adding lanes. I don't know where they finding the street from <laughs> space, <laughs> but they keep adding lanes, and it's still crazy, dog. Like, yeah, but I was like, think if I if I'm paying six something seven hundred dollars rent, no car payment, I could I could stack more, and then when I did find my job, I could use that that I was stacking for marketing. Right. Whereas other people, they don't they don't got no money to spend on the business because mm -hmm. they're spending it on everything else. Mm -hmm. And they want to do everything organic and right. Word of mouth. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I ain't got I ain't got time to, to let somebody talk about me. I gotta let you know I'm here. Hmm. That's a bar. Word of mouth, great. But let me go tell some people about me so they can go tell some people about me. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, yo, I'm going to wrap this up on here too. I just got to get this thought out. This would have been great for last episode because, you know, I was talking about sheer volume. People need to start applying the rule of 100 because, like I said, people don't know how much sheer volume it takes for success. Mm -hmm. So if you got, Money or you got time, mm -hmm. right? So most people, if they don't have the budget for stuff, you got the time to put in the sweat equity for something. Mm -hmm. If you not, more so don't got the time or if you want to save the time, you can use your dollar for something. So if we're talking about volume and, and lead generation and, and marketing and stuff, you got outbound marketing and inbound marketing. Outbounds, you reaching out to people. Inbounds, people reaching out to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever, if you have the rule of 100, you need to be bare minimum doing at least 100 actions per day mm -hmm. to find any level of success. Mm -hmm. You're doing outbound, you're making calls, you need to be making at least 100 calls a day. Mm -hmm. You're doing cold calls, at least 100 cold calls a day. You're doing DMs, at least 100 DMs a day. Mm -hmm. you interacting in Facebook groups, at least 100 Facebook groups a day. You spending money on it, at least a hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Like it got to be at least, and that's a small amount of, right. really a small amount of action when you, when you really get in the game and yeah, know sure. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But imagine I tell somebody, yo, make some cold calls. Yo, I made, I made twenty calls this week. Who gonna win? You or the person doing a hundred a day? A day, yeah. I tell somebody go run some Facebook ads. Oh, I, I ran some ads, bro. They ain't work. How much you been? Man, I lost like fifty dollars. <laughs> you ain't even did enough volume to even get any data yeah, back to yeah. even see and read what works and, and what doesn't. Yeah. And what's what doesn't work. Yeah. It's probably still in the learning phase. The with Facebook ads. You have to get a certain amount of conversions before it even starts to reach the people right. that you want it to reach. So they figuring it out. So you, if you have that conversion set to sales, it might have to that ad might have to generate twenty sales before it can get out of the learning phase. Mm -hmm. And then if it's taking too long, they'll let you know, like, hey. This joint ain't hidden. <laughs> I supposed to be. Yeah, hidden, right? it'll stay. It'll stay in learning. Learning limited. Yeah. Yep. That means that it's it's not going to reach the amount of people that it could because it hasn't learned the audience yet. Because mm -hmm. it it wants to hit a certain amount of conversions in a time window. People cut it off before it even gets to the time window. Right. Yeah, I spent fifty dollars, man. How many sales you get? Zero. Well, the shoot, the ad needs at least, it sits there and says it needs 20 sales 
you got the conversion set to sales. It needs 20 sales to even learn who to get in front of. Mm-hmm. And then you stopping that to start another one and then doing it over and over and over again. And you just wasting money because you never really get to that point. Yeah. So y'all rule 100, man. It, Cause it takes volume to find success because the percentages of the conversions are going to be so small. You got to have volume. And so if you apply the rule of 100, whether it be inbound or outbound, you will at least start to see some momentum at some point. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me if you do 100 of anything every single day, you're not going to get better at it. Right. You want to get in better shape? You don't want to go to the gym? I guarantee you, you do 100 push-ups a day. Mm -hmm. You're going to start to see a difference. You're going to feel different and you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to see it in the mirror. Do 100 push-ups a day, 100 sit-ups a day, you're going to see it. You do 100 calls a day, you're going to get better. And at the beginning of anything, you're going to suck. You're going to suck because you ain't did it before. Right. So, Like y'all got to know, it's called getting better at something. <laughs> yeah, and, and everything that we are good at now, there was a time where we sucked at it. Yeah, for sure. Everything we now know how to do, we sucked at it. How did we get better? Through repetition. Yeah. When you got behind the wheel of a car, you sucked. Now you know how to drive. Yeah, might have taken you a year to take your first steps. And that's what anything, repetition is the father of learning. The only reason that we know how to do anything is because we did it again and again and again and again. The only reason you know how to talk is because your mama and your daddy sat in front of you and said, say mama. <laughs> say mama. And then your daddy came and said, now say that, that. <laughs> say that, that. And then you just sit here like... <laughs> That 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 say A B C one two three right say A B C A B C and you know babies always say daddies be like because I'm sure your kids said dad at first right oh yeah for sure because it's easier. No, it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's impossible to yeah. say mama first. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but daddies get that one up. Yeah, they love sure. me. For sure, for sure. <laughs> and then Viv, bro, Viv, <laughs> Viv used to be hating. Or they'd be saying, dad, dad, dad. I'd be like, they said daddy. Viv like, no, they not. I was like, man, you just hating, man. Yeah. But y'all, uh, as, as entrepreneurs, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. But as entrepreneurs, y'all, you got to think as, as an entrepreneur, we take a lot of investment advice when we're out here looking to be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. It's a different brain that you're thinking with. And don't get confused with all the information out here because it's easy to get the two confused as if they're the same thing. Right. Like I do invest, but right now the stage that I'm in, what I invest in is myself and my personal development and acquire first and acquiring skills first and then the business second because mm. I need the skills for the business. Right. That's not a lot of people or investors wouldn't look at that as an investment. Mm-hmm. They're looking at things like real estate. How many doors? Yeah. Quantifiable stocks. Things. Yeah, stocks. Uh, uh, all that stuff that these guys talk about. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, all these guys that talk about it, they're entrepreneurs. They got some business about themselves that they build. Mm-hmm. They, they they're building education companies. Mm-hmm. Why don't we start to look and see what they're doing so much? Yeah, this dude told you to buy that stock. He ain't get to where he's at just from buying that stock. Exactly. 
That's like, like, remember you called me? I was like, yeah, bro, I'm I'm doing the Hormozy method. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> 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 <"Yeah."> <laughs> bro, I never, I swear, I've never felt so stupid than in that very moment, bro. Like, I was like, ah, you right. <laughs> Like, it Can was I explain so it? Then we go. Look, this is the last thing I'm gonna explain it. Then we wrapping it up. My man said, "I was I was getting my man together. I was like, bro, get this digital product together. Get this ebook together. Get this course. Gave him the whole play. He did it. Still ain't put it out, which I still don't understand why. The t- when he finally did put it out." My man puts out his digital product. He puts out his ebook. He's selling it for a dollar. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? You don't want to make no money? He said, oh, yeah, I'm taking the Alex Hormozy approach. I'm just giving it away <laughs> for a dollar. I said, you do realize Alex Hormozy made $100 million first? <laughs> that's, why, that's why his book is such a hit? <laughs> The hundred million dollar offers book is a hit because the author made a hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Oh, <laughs> that does make sense, hey, bro." Oh, bro, everything just started <laughs> came crashing down in that very moment, dog. Like I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like this I man want to sell a, a sell an ebook to a hundred million people for a dollar, bro. I swear, I was just like, "Oh man, my whole world just got flipped upside down." I was like my whole approach is 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 trash, <laughs> just trash, and and. And that's a, that's a this could be a topic for next episode. Put a pin in it. As far as identifying your audience, mm-hmm. because most people that listen to Alex Hormozy, they don't understand that they're not his audience at right, all. Right, at all. They're listening to information that they can't do anything with, and they think that they're learning. Mm-hmm. You're not learning. You're wasting time. You're being entertained. Mm-hmm. Alex Hormozy makes. His content for somebody making $3 million a year. Mm -hmm. He wants the person making $3 million a year to contact him to learn how to scale to $10 million so he can take an equity position in their company with Mm -hmm. acquisitions.com. He acquires equity positions in companies, Mm -hmm. helps them scale for an equity ownership position. His avatar isn't the the entrepreneur that's not made their first $5,000. Right. His avatar isn't the entrepreneur that hasn't made $10,000 a month yet. What's what's the what's what's the favorite soundbite you like to use with Emoji? About the you want to you want to know how to make a million dollars? You want to you want to <laughs> learn how to make a million dollars? Find something that's worth what what he said. You want to know how to make a million dollars? Find something, buy something for $1 million that's worth $2 million and sell it for $2 million. You just made a million. That's how you make a million dollars. That's who his avatar is. <laughs> yeah. His avatar is not the beginning entrepreneur. His avatar is not the entrepreneur making $30,000, $100,000. Yeah. But a lot of people think that they're learning from talking of stuff that they don't even comprehend what he's saying. Right. You don't know what CAC is. You listen to a video of him talking about CAC. Yeah. You don't know what... uh, uh, He's over here talking about... uh, LTV is a basic thing. I'm just saying this. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Actually, a lot of a lot of people that think that they're learning from Alice will learn a lot more if you listen to his wife's content. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you telling me that Layla. Layla Layla makes content that's implement that that an entrepreneur figuring stuff out can 
implement. Mm -hmm. Whereas Alex on Mosey going to tell you, here's how you make a million dollars. <laughs> you buy something for a million that's worth two million and you sell it for two million. You made a million dollars. It's easy, man. It's easy. <laughs> Simple. Simple. <laughs> and I have nothing to sell you. <laughs> but he doesn't have anything to sell you yeah. because he made a hundred million dollars selling you. Exactly. So you sat there and was like, yo, man, I ain't got nothing to sell you. <laughs> So I'm yeah, cause he cause he sold high ticket products. Yeah, gym launch. To make the hundred million and still sells high ticket products. Mm -hmm. And made the hundred million. Therefore, he's able to spend sixty plus thousand a month in content creation to sell you nothing. Mm -hmm. Because he realized that his organic traffic, he was getting a cheaper CPM organically than paid ads. Mm -hmm. For y'all that don't know what CPM means, which most of you all don't, which is why you're not his avatar. Right. <laughs> CPM is your is your cost per 1,000 impressions. Mm -hmm. Hormozy realized that his organic content, he was getting more cost on, he was getting a better cost per 1,000 impressions for what he was investing in creating organic content then paid and he's like he made acquisitions.com to get the business business owner making at least three million dollars he a better way to reach them since his cpms was lower is through organic content mm -hmm. but then you somebody will sit there and see alex hormozy doing organic content and they hear this word organic they be like, yo, I ain't, I ain't investing nothing in my content or ads or nothing like right. that. He's doing it organically. Yeah, it's technically organically because he's just posting it. Right. But he's spending damn near hundred thousand dollars a month creating it. Mm -hmm. the last I heard him say, it was like sixty or seventy k a month. I think he said sixty, thirty thousand a month for him and thirty thousand a month for Layla. They own the company together, mm -hmm. so sixty thousand a month. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's organic though. <laughs> ah, budgets in there. He just he just realized that real, for him, real putting okay. the sixty into the into that versus putting the sixty into some ads, he gets a better return. Right. Because he's getting the more attention. Attention. He's building a brand. He has the proof of concept of building the hundred million dollar company. That why wouldn't somebody making three million want to partner with him? Right. So, yeah, put a pin in there, bro. That'll be next episode. No identifying your audience, man. Identifying your audience. We're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that, man. If y'all watching me, you ain't watching me for no investment shit. We entrepreneurs. <laughs>